welcome back guys to part 8 of our Top Down Construct 3 series. Now today I want to focus a little bit on effects, just to spice things up a little with the stages and just show you guys what you can do with regards to that before we move on to the player attack and obviously the enemy attack because that'll work very similar to the movement etc. But let's go ahead and do something cool with regards to some of the effects just giving it that, that look and feel that you'd want in, in, in your game as well as in my game being the, the dungeon based style type. Right, so we're just gonna jump straight into it. And the first we're gonna do is add a new sprite. And obviously I've got a little character, so I'm just gonna add a new sprite on this, this layer and select sprite here quickly. And let's put it over here. And basically what I wanna do is I wanna replicate some sort of flying, you know, like you could say those light flies, essentially give it that look around the, around the torches um, that are burning. Just making it look pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and add um, my animation. Obviously, working with pixel animation uh, is what I'm I'm going for. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put it, drag it straight in here. Um, that's fine. Let's try. It. Let's just do that again. Import from the files and number two as well because it's a bit of an animation. And I'll just delete that one there and then set the animation to loop. Right, fantastic. So yeah, you can see I've got a little fly. It's pretty big. So I'm just gonna scale him down by holding in shift to keep it that, and that looks like it pretty much works. So the whole idea is just to have him fly around this torch area randomly is really what I wanna replicate. So if I push play there, we can see him, he's flashing. We could make him effectively a little bit bigger, not too big, but you guys get the gist of it. So there he is, he's flashing, pretty cool stuff. Right, so the next thing I want to do is add a behavior to this individual. Now, for those of you that don't know, Construct allows third-party behaviors as well. There's a lot of plugins that I encourage you to go and look. If you click on the view and you click on the add-on manager, please, very important, you can add, you can just click on get add-ons and you can get a whole bunch of add-ons that are not even worth Construct. So I've got an added the move to only because this move to opposed to the one that's in the game has a few extra options and it's just more smoother than, than the one um, that the currently the game is using. So I've gone ahead and added this move to. You don't necessarily have to move this. You're not gonna notice a difference. I'm just letting you know that if you don't see this move to with the golf icon in this tutorial, that's because I've added this plugin via the Get Add-ons plugin. So just a heads up by rex.rainbow. You can just Google that and you can add it. Uh, click Install New and select the file. But the normal the normal move to will do the exact same thing. Just a little bit, I feel that it sometimes often feels a little bit more stickier. Right, so I've gone and added that, so I wanna just add that behavior to this little thing here. I'm gonna just quickly rename it as well. And let's just rename that to fly. Let's just do fly. And uh, let's go ahead and shove an instance variable. And I'm gonna add two instance variables here quickly as well. And the first one I'm gonna do is just a base X, cause I wanna know where he's at and make that a number. And then I wanna add another one, which is the base Y. Try and get that all unified. Great, so I've got these two instant variables which I'm gonna use in my code, and then the behavior, which is the move to behavior. So I'm gonna click on move to, and I'm gonna use this one. Like I said, you can use the other one. It's the same thing, you'll be able to get the same results. I'm gonna set this to 90, acceleration with maybe 30. We can always change this. You guys are welcome to use whatever you like. And 30, right. So great, we've got a move to, and now we can hop over to our event sheet. Now I'm just gonna minimize this. Now yeah, we need to start cleaning things up. So theoretically, I would like to start splitting this soon so we can work in areas that, you know, in the areas that is required, opposed to having going through all this code trying to find what we are. So I'm gonna go and add a new event sheet. Add event sheet, and I'm gonna call this, uh, let's call this effects, effects. And let's start this off properly. So we have all our effects in one, and then obviously we have um, the balance over there if that makes sense. Now it might not read this um, this event sheet purely because we haven't, you know, sort of said included, but if we have this as the main, let's go and rename this to main. Rename this to main, fantastic. And then we just wanna basically go and include an event sheet, which is our new one, which is effects, because it's not gonna know it's there because I've, I've obviously added it now. Right, so click okay, and there it includes. So whatever I put in here, when the code runs, it will include this, this basically this, this, this new one. Right, fantastic. Now that that's there, we can go over to the effects and we can start. So the first I'm gonna do is add a group, obviously, like I quite like, let's call it a group. Uh, let's go add group. 
and we're going to call that supplies front because we're dealing with supplies. Okay, fantastic. Now we can go ahead and I'm going to add a local variable. So let's just click on add event. Sorry, right click, right click, add a global variable, which I'll move to a local. So let's just say, uh, and we're going to call this go x because I want him to go to a certain place, obviously. And I'm just going to just drag that down into a local and add another one. Or I can just replicate that. I'm going to double click that and we're going to call that obviously go y. Right, now these two variables, I'm going to compare that with those base variables. Um, you know, but you use that between the two, so that I don't know. Okay, so then I'm going to add a new event, and this event's going to be the system on start layout event. So I'm going to click there, on start of layout, in other words, when the stage loads, that is the, the condition, and I want to add two specific, um, you could say, actions to this condition. So we want to go ahead and set the value, and we're going to set base x, and I'm going to set that to self, meaning itself. Okay, so self, so it knows where it's at. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do it this way. You could just use self, but in this case, I'm just a program to using it like this. And then the same with Y. So I'm just going to double click that, click back and set the value again, set value, base Y, and we're going to make that Y as well. Fantastic. So yeah, we've got basically the base X to air to self X and the base Y. So we're filling those variables over here with the self coordinates where it's currently at. And then I'm going to add another condition. So I'm going to have system. I'm going to go every so many seconds. So let's just go seconds every X amount of seconds. So yeah, we could we could choose and it doesn't have to be always be every one second and it looks very so we random it up a bit. So let's say choose. Uh, and yeah, we could go for instance 1.5 maybe. Uh, let's go with uh, one. Let's go with um, 0.5. Could be cool. Let's go with 0.2. Just for an example. You, know, you don't have to use as many as this, but you feel free to do so. 0.2. Okay. So we'll just do that. X amount of seconds is my condition, and then we're going to do a for each inside this condition. In other words, for each flies. In case I copy paste it on my layout, where I go copy paste. Give an example. Why not? Let's do it. Yeah. Do another one. There's another one. So it knows that each one is going to do something. So let's do that. Right. So we know we've got two for the for each. Then we're going to go into our sub event, obviously, because we want it to be below this first condition every so many seconds. And we add a sub event and let's go ahead uh, system. And we go for each. So we type that in. So we go for each. And we choose the fly. Done. And then the next thing is to go ahead now and set the parameters. So the first one I do is the system. So I want to set basically this local. So it has to be system. So we're going to go set value because it's a global variable. We're going to say go X. And yeah, we're basically going to want to set it to the floor. Now, what this means is we, we're calculating the, the distance on the floor versus these coordinates. So in this case, what we're going to do here is we're going to go floor. I'm going to go random, random. I hope this works. It's been a while since I've done it. So 32 pixel. We're going to go 32 seconds, sorry. And then we're going to go, um, I think that is a multiple. Multiply that by, let's say, choose, choose one and then minus one pixel. Let's see if that works. Now, there could be an area. Like I said, I haven't done this in a while. I think that there's a comma, of course. There we go. Right. So floor random 32 and then choose one by one. Because that's the x coordinates between the floor that it's currently set at. Right, so let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and then obviously, um, I think random there. Let's just copy that and then let's go and set the y as well. Right, so floor, random, 32, choose one, blah, blah, blah. That sounds about right. Now, this we can change. I'll explain this now in a second. Right, so the next thing is we're going to then set the fly. And in this case, we're going to use the move to position. Uh, will that work? Yeah, we can use the delta x, y, but I'm going to use the move to. Let's see if that works. And then, yeah, we're going to basically go self, as you know what his self is, dot base, dot, which is that coordinate, the base coordinate on the left hand side of the variable we created. And we're going to plus this go x coordinate, which is that variable. Okay. And then the one below it, the y, is we're going to go self, as you can imagine, self dot. Uh, base and that is y and then we're going to plus the go y fantastic 
Right, so let's have a look on start of layout. We're setting um, these instant variables on the start of the layout. We've got these local variables set at zero, which is perfect. We then go ahead and say for each fly, we then work out, we set this local variable based on where the fly is, the floor random. We're randoming a position around it, uh, the, its pixels around it, and then we subtract in one. Right, so let's go and have a look and see if that does what I wanted to. Basically, this should just move around, uh, theoretically. Let's see if it does. Right, so there we go. Okay, it's a little bit wide and a little sporadic. I might have to move that down. But you get the idea, the pixels might just be too much. I might have to take that over eight. So this just gives that idea, the illusion that the, the flies are, are basically moving around. That's what we want to go for. So randomly, they're just going to weird positions, which is what we want. So we can go ahead and change that, um, change that, uh, choose a random between eight, and we can shorten the range because we're dealing with pixel based range, and that should be much better. Okay, so you'll see that the distances now are smaller, and then we can move it around this little fire pit. Right, so the next effect we want to do is like a dark ambient and give light around the torches and the hero as if he's walking in a dungeon. Uh, that's always such a cool effect to have. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new layer at the top here. I'm going to call this shadow, just to give you an idea. We're going to take away the transparency, the transparent, sorry, and we're going to go ahead and make that black, which is pretty cool. Then we're going to go and set the force's own texture, which is fine. No, sorry, that we can just leave unchecked. Then we're going to get what we need to do. No, sorry, let's just use force texture. We'll go ahead and set this to 90. Let's go and set that to 90%. All right, so there it is. So if I run it now, you're going to see it's got a sort of a dark look over it. In fact, make that 85. So click on that same layer here, and let's go make that 85. Do you want to just, just be able to see what's going on if this is a dark stage? Right, fantastic. Then the next thing is on this layer, let's go ahead and add another sprite. So we click on Insert New Sprite. Let's click on Sprite and click over there. And I'm just going to drag in an animation that I have. You can just use the paint tool. That's what I did. I'm just doing this to save time than to work it out. So yeah, you can see just using the paint tool, spread it out nice and wide with the paint tool. And then you can have this little effect. Just use black as well. So you just use the, sorry, the, um, the other paintbrush tool and then just lengthen the, the threads. Or you can do this in Photoshop or whatever works for you. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And then I'm going to go ahead and make this smaller. Let me just hold in shift so I keep it ratio and i want to just about bring this over this torch then what i want to do is with regards to this i want to go with the blend mode i want to go destination out so you'll see now it's taking shape so let's use this one just to give you an idea make it a little bit smaller so we know that wherever these torches there's going to be this bit of light so you can set the torches everywhere go ahead and play that and there we go see he's in the light he's out the light Etc. Now what we can do, let's just rename that obviously so we know that that is the wall uh, torch. Okay, let's do that there. And let's go ahead and copy that into these as well, just to give it that effect, just to show you. Right, fantastic. Go ahead and play it. And there we go. So you see now we've got this little look and feel, we've got these enemies coming in. And then we can go one step further. We can go ahead and say, okay, you know what, let's clone this clone this object type okay and let's put it right over here okay so that it's separate from these so that they don't they don't uh, change and we're going to change this to player player light just to give you another idea what we can do here player light and we're going to just hover that over the player at first glance okay then we're going to go and add a behavior let's go and add the pin behavior as you know where i'm going with this and then in our main file, we can go ahead, we've got the start of layout, we can go to the player light, pin this behavior to an object, which would be our animation, player animation. Done, and if we run that now, we're gonna have this cool effect where wherever we go, we've got this little bit of light or whatever. Gives you guys an idea of what you can do. And then there's our little flies going mad, flying around this. I think this creates such a nice dark ambient top stage if you if you have like a dungeon, etc. All right, guys, so that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we've got some exciting stuff coming up. I'm going to be touching on all different areas uh, to show you how in-depth we can take this game and adding all these great little effects is what makes uh, game creation so pretty awesome. Guys, as always, if you could hit the subscribe and the little like button there, that'll be fantastic. A little thumbs up and we'll catch you guys.